So today, you guys, we have Jared from MLS, and um, we're just going to do like a broad overview of the multiple listing service, its function in our marketplace, um, further define um, specific types of listings out there that we get the most questions on. Um, and we'll do just a general Q&A as well. Um, we'll kind of keep this casual um, like we did last or a couple weeks ago with Jared from Right Angle Home Inspection mm -hmm. with our other guest. Um, so please feel free to jump in with questions at any time. Um, we've kind of got a loose agenda, um, but- He has a PowerPoint. Oh, you do, perfect. Then I will make Jared the co-host <laughs> so he can share his screen. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> thank you for having me again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just jump straight in to MetroMLS.com. There's a lot of useful information on our website that you may not know is even there or where to find it. So we're just going to briefly cover through um, those resources on here. So give me a second to share my screen. All right, everyone can see my the Metro MLS home screen? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Um, so a couple of tabs I wanted to point out. Along this top here, uh, maybe all these different drop downs. So the MLS drop down, there's uh, basically one thing I really want to point out in here, and that's this mem member toolkit. If I click on the member toolkit, um, basically these are sheets that we have created um, that instead of having to go through the entire policy procedure manuals, and try to find what you're looking for. We've kind of broken it down by topic. So if we click on listing resources, you can see we do have this address formatting and abbreviation guide. So instead of having to sort through and you know find everything having to do with addresses, we had it all up in, on this one convenient sheet for you. We do cover a variety of topics, as you can see. Uh, we do have fair housing tips. I know that was a concern. Um, so uh, feel free to go in and use this if there is a topic that you would like us to cover that's not currently covered, let us know and we'll be happy to put together um, additional uh, sheets for you guys. Now, if we go to the support tab, FlexMLS manuals. These are basically just paper copies on how to do everything in the system. So if I want to uh, click on the custom dashboard, it's going to bring up a PDF and it's going to walk me through how to create a custom dashboard. So if you're one that likes to kind of read and then do, that's a good option for you. The other thing I wanted to show you in, um, under the support tab is su subscribe to the Metro Word blog. That's really important. I can't state that enough. Um, in order to receive our blog posts, you do need to su subscribe to it. Um, this is the best way for us to keep in touch with all of you guys whenever we have a change um, in the system, whether it's uh, a new feature, uh, new policies, things like that. So again, go to support and subscribe to the Metro Word blog. And I'm going to interrupt right there. This is why I yeah. love these. I, we did not know that existed. So, and we will subscribe. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing we're going to look at is rules. Um, I know this was a concern for you guys as well. Um, so, we do have our pen penalty policy here. So, these are basically just the different sanctions. We do also have this fix my mistake. So, if you come across an error in one of your listings and we haven't corrected that listing yet, report yourself. Let us know and we can take care of working with you to get it uh, straightened out before we had to issue a sanction. But we do have all of our sanction codes here. So these are kind of the big things that we go through and double check on every listing that, that gets put into the system for accuracy. We also do have under rules, top 10 violations. We have a little section here on avoiding penalties, reviewing fines. So these are our biggest violations that we have. Number one is the address error. Um, the reason we're, we're so fussy when it comes to the address formatting is it ties the listing history of that property together. Something as, as small as someone adding in a piece of punctuation or spelling out street versus using just ST could basically make the, um, the history not appear on that listing. Uh, the next one down, incorrect expiration date. 
we want to make sure that we're always matching up line 311 and line 312 um, on our listing contracts with our listing and expiration dates in the, in the system. And that's our uh, number three is listing date. We want to make sure that we're, again, we're using that line 311. It's not the date your seller signed that listing agreement. Your listing agreement does not go into place. It does not actually start until we reach that, um, that listing date in our contract. So I could you know, have Joan come over. I signed the listing contract today, but let's say it's not dated to start until 5-1. So she can't do anything with that listing whatsoever until 5-1. So we want to make sure that those are matching up. Variable rate commission. Joan, do you guys allow variable rate? No. Okay, then we'll skip over that one. Named prospects. There are a few different parts to this one. So anytime we see a named buyer in the listing agreement, you know they're excluded from the term of the contract. Maybe the contract terms um, alter if Uncle Bob purchases the property. Um, we would need that to be checked yes for named prospect. Also, if you have a protected buyers list from a previous expired listing agreement, then we need to have that checked um, yes as well for named prospect. Number six is incorrect item in remarks. Uh, we are gonna cover remarks a little bit further um, into the program, but we wanna make sure that under public remarks, we're leaving the information just about the home itself or the area that the home is in. We don't, we don't wanna see any names, phone numbers, email addresses, anything like that. We wanna keep the public remarks just about the home itself. Um, and just like with private remarks, it is broker to broker. We don't care what you put in there as long as it's not deflammatory information. Okay. Incorrect municipality. So we're going to want to match whatever the municipality is um, in either tax information or monsoon where it's the taxed by municipality. When it comes to the tax by municipality, you do not have a choice. It's taxed by who it's taxed by. Um, however, when it comes to the uh, postal municipality, sometimes you may have several different options. I always give the example of, of Bayview. Bayview is a postal municipality. It is not a tax municipality. However, if I was to send a piece of mail to someone living in Bayview, I could put either Milwaukee or Bayview as the postal municipality, and they're going to get that letter. So the default in the system, um, and I can show you guys later on where that is, uh, the default in the system is going to be Milwaukee. And if I wanted to use that Bayview, I would use that drop down and change it to Bayview. And correct tax key. I always recommend to people if you're adding your own listing yourself, definitely go to tax information or monsoon, copy and paste, it's the easiest way to not screw that, that one up. Um, also, once your listing goes active in the system, go into your listing and click on the tax information button. Make sure you're getting your, your tax information for that property. If you're getting someone else's, or if um, you get a search screen, it means there's something wrong, it's a good opportunity to go in and fix that. And then the last one is broker owned. So broker owned, I really don't like that it says broker owned. It should say, in my opinion, licensee owned. So it doesn't matter if you have a broker's license or a real estate salesperson's license. If you have a valid license in the state of Wisconsin, you're required to disclose that to the public. Um, it is just a matter of um, public trust. Um, the big issue is, or the big expectation I should say, is that someone with a valid real estate license has a better understanding of uh, negotiating and transactions than the average uh, average consumer. Okay, lastly, we're gonna look at it on the homepage. Okay, we're gonna go under learning and we have this video library. So this video library, um, a lot of them are kind of shorter videos. <clears throat> they're great to watch. You can pause them and then kind of do what they're doing in the video. So it's kind of a great way to learn. They're all just alphabetized here. Or if I want to put videos just on a specific um, topic, so like search and flex some of us. If I click on that, it's going to give me just those videos that are associated with searching. Okay, so now we're actually going to get into the system a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, actually, you're going to give the PowerPoint. Give me one second to get this set up. Go. 
All right. So basically, what is the purpose of the MLS? We really serve two main functions in the marketplace, and that is to um, foster the spirit of cooperation and then also the compensation side of it. So uh, the cooperation part, if you're a member of the MLS, you have the right to go and show a property, and you have the right then to get paid if you sell that property. So that's the compensation side of it. Again, we do focus heavily on data accuracy. Um, I don't like to say that we're the, the, the police, but we try to make sure that the market is an even playing field for everyone that is participating in it. So the next thing we have here is that listings are required to be entered into FlexMLS no later than 48 hours from the start term of the contract. Federal holidays are excluded from that. And earlier when we were talking about the line 311 and 312, you can see that right on our screen here. So again, we wanna make sure that we're lining up 311 with our um, listing date and line 312 with our expiration date. And this is what that looks like. Got our main fields tab. Again, we're lining up 311 with the listing date. You've got a little note here to remind you. Expiration date, same thing, a little note here to remind you what that is. During that 48 hour time period, you do need to upload your listing agreement. Currently, it's the first, third, and last page of the listing agreement. Um, so keep in mind, if there is a blank on one of the forms that you can fill in information, those are the pages that we are gonna need uploaded. Within seven days um, from the listing going active, we do need at least one primary exterior photo uploaded. Uh, we do not allow uh, real estate signs, wording, watermarks, logos, anything like that. Uh, if you do submit photos that contain those, we do, do go through and Photoshop those out. We don't charge you for that, especially this time of year. Um, if your sign's already been there and you may have had a snow picture, now you, you, know, you want to update it with a flower picture, we're not going to make you rip out your sign and, and redo everything. So you don't even have to let us know. We look at that primary photos every day. Keep in mind also though, that once your listing goes active, it is going out to all those third-party websites. So even though you have seven days to upload at least one photo, and maybe you know, you're waiting for a beautiful day, you're having a photographer come in to take those photos for you, um, they are going out and if you don't have at least one photo, um, people aren't gonna, usually usually people don't take a look back to see what they what they miss. Um, so take a placeholder with your with your phone, upload it and then you can always change it out once you get those photos back. <clears throat> so this is what we were talking about a little while ago with the tax key number. So again, we wanna make sure we're using the tax key number as it's found in wire data or in Monsoon. And this is the search screen. So when you go back in and double check, if you get this search screen or you get someone else's tax um, sheet, then go ahead and make that change before we find it. So this is where we were talking about um, using the taxi municipality. So in this example, this is our building here in Wauwatosa. We're taxed by the municipality of Wauwatosa. So that's the only option I have for using my tax file. Here. However, if I go to usps.com, I can actually search by a zip code. So 53207. And here I can see either I can use Milwaukee or Bayview. So it's my, kind of my option as a listing agent, okay, which is to be more desirable for people. And if you are gonna make that change, we put in the zip code and it's gonna unlock this postal municipality dropdown for us. And from here is where I can change Bayview or Milwaukee. This is an old screenshot, so we'll ignore that for now. So when it comes to the address formatting, we had spoken earlier about the reason why it's so important to us to make sure that, that we're having that history run with that property. So for firehouse addresses, um, I grew up in Ozaki County. We love our north, south, east, and west addresses. Um, and normally when you write it out on an envelope, you kind of put a space between those two sections. However, for our purposes, we're gonna put that entire um, letter number combination right into street number without the, the space in between here. Okay, if you're listing a uh, property with multiple addresses. You're going to add the first one under street number, and then you're going to add any additional ones under unit number slash additional addresses. When it comes to listing condos, even if the address uses the word unit or has the pound sign, since it already says unit number right here in the description, 
we're just going to put the unit number itself. Okay, so again, just a reminder with the public remarks, um, it's actually up to 800 characters now. I need to update the slide. We want to make sure that we're using the public remarks to just talk about the property itself or the surrounding area. So close to a certain park or walking distance to that, or we just want to make sure that we're not incorporating any company information, email addresses, or websites, anything like that. Again, uh, for private remarks, it's up to 400 characters. That is broker to broker. Members of the public are not going to see any of that information. So there is where you can put in those web links. Um, so if there's like an addendum or an amendment that needs to get filed along with an offer, um, that's where you can put that link for, to the other agent. Okay, we're going to run through the different statuses and kind of how they're used. I know sometimes they can kind of get interchanged in your head. So for a listing to be active in the system, it has to meet two main criteria. One is that it's available to be shown in a cooperative manner, meaning that if a property is not available to be shown for more than a 48 hour period of time, we don't deem that to be in a cooperative manner. The expectation is that if a property is listed as active, it is available for showings. The second part is that it um, offers compensation to cooperating brokers. So if you're not able to have those showings right off the bat, you can go ahead and delay your listing. There is a form on our website, delayed listing form, um, that needs to be filled out and signed by you as the listing agent, as well as by the seller themselves. So a couple of things with the delayed form. So days on market begin only after it goes active. So you can delay the listing for up to 21 days. If you um, only have it delayed for 14, we can always extend those days for you. We just cannot make it go active earlier than the date that's been advertised in the system. It is searchable prior to the listing um, going active, but it can only go out through manual emails. It does not go out through subscription emails. And then marketing of the property can be done like normal. The only thing you cannot do is show that property. And no showings of any kind does mean no agent previews, no brokers opens, and no members of the public going through that property. Okay. The listing has to start off in delayed status. So when you're entering in your listing under main fields, the status, the default is going to be active. So if I wanted to make it delayed, I would just use the drop down arrow, change it to delayed, and then go ahead and, and add in my start showing date. This, the system will make this automatically go active for you the morning of this date here. While it's the delayed uh, listing, um, the priority type, you can accept showings in the property. I'm not sorry, you can't accept offers in the property uh, sight unseen. So if you are going to be either accepting an offer sight unseen or writing an offer sight unseen, make sure you talk to your broker and that you're using the language that they want you to use. Jared, so, can I ask a question? Yes. If, um, if an offer is accepted sight unseen, though, that buyer who has the accepted offer can still cannot see it until that start showing date, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So we want to make sure that. Um, any of those dates that we've got um, lined up properly so that we're not trying to get it's pretty, getting ourselves into a pickles, having just trying to show a property that can't be shown yet. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. So kind of the companion piece to the delayed listing is the withdrawn listing. So delayed listings have to start off as delayed. However, during the course of a listing, you may have to pause showings for a while. Uh, sellers are leaving town, they're having company in from out of town, um, whatever reason, they just can't have showings. You can withdraw that listing at any time. We, do, as the MLS, do not need paperwork. You guys can do that on your own. Um, I would recommend, however, that you get something in writing from your seller. So they kind of have that paper trail that they understand that it's, it's not going to be shown. Um, you can make it go back to active status at any point in time. Um, there's no maximum a number of days associated with withdrawn. Just keep in mind, your marketing can still take place just like in delayed. You just can't have showings of any kind. So again, that's no agent previews, no brokers opens, and no members of the public going through that property. And this is why we've said that several times. So if we find out that the property was shown, the first time offense is $200 per day. Because if you showed it on day 10, what's to say you didn't show it on day one? So in that example, it'd be a $2,000 sanction. Agent does it a second time in a two-year period. They uh, find doubles to $400 per day. So it becomes a $4,000 sanction in that case. Agent does it a third time in a two-year period. 
um, they lose their MLS access for 30 days. They do it a fourth time in a two year period. The whole office gets shut off for 30 days. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about it. The broker will get be involved from the first offense. So you shouldn't have to worry about it. And if somehow the agent does it a fifth time in their two year period, they lose their MLS access for six months. So just keep that in mind. No showings of any kind does mean no agent previews, no brokers opens, and no members of the public going through that property. Take that seriously, everybody. So um, difference between expired listings, excluded listings. Um, basically, an expired listing is um, the date on line 312 of your listing agreement has been reached. You no longer have a valid listing contract. The system automatically kicks it to expired for you. Now, with excluded listings, these you have to be very, very careful on. The whole point of excluding a listing is to protect your seller's privacy. Uh, they may you know, be a CEO of a company have accepted a new position out of town, out of state, and they wanna get their house sold before they put notice in. Um, and having a sign out there in their yard and all those kinds of things could be a definite red flag um, for that CEO's company that he's working for. So again, it needs to be for seller privacy. No advertising of any kind can take place while it's excluded. The property can only be verbally communicated to other agents. So um, I, Darnell's here with me. Um, we're having coffee one day and I say, hey, I've got you know a three bedroom, two bath home in Whitefish Bay in this price range. Let me know if you have any buyers. That's fine. However, if I were to send him a text message, type out an email to him, do any, send him any kind of pictures, anything like that, it becomes advertising at that point. So we wanna make sure that there is no advertising taking place whatsoever on excluded listings. And the agent is responsible if the seller advertises the property. But again, we have to keep in mind that the whole purpose of this is to protect the seller's privacy. So if they're going on Facebook, things like that, they're obviously not too concerned about their privacy if they're putting it out there themselves either. Uh, Jared, can I ask a question on yeah, that? absolutely. Because um, we get questions on this. Can it be shown um, on Keller Williams' private Facebook? No. Or does, yeah. That's what we try to- It cannot be shown yeah. anywhere, um, even if on an internal server. Um, by sharing it anywhere, it's literally being physically marketed. Um, so that, that's not allowed. And this actually is the clear cooperation policy that I have up on the screen right now. And if the property is marketed in any way, shape or form, other than the verbal communication, the agent does have one business day to get that property entered into the MLS. So if, it, if the property gets marketed in any way, shape or form, they lose the, uh, the privacy side of it. Um, and that's where this clear cooperation does come into play. And this one does not mess around as well. So if that property is not entered into the MLS within that, that one business day, first time violation results in a thousand dollar sanction per day that it was not um, input. Second time to your period goes up to $2,000 per day. Third, third time violation, $5,000 per day. Fourth violation, um, sanction of $5,000 per day and suspension of MLS services for 30 days. And that continued abu abuse uh, could lead to suspension of MLS services for MLS brokers. So we want to keep in mind that the whole point again is protecting the seller's privacy. Um, but you do have other options such as, you know, the delayed and withdrawn status to kind of, you know, create a, a customized plan for them. Okay, so we want to keep in mind too, um, you can get uh, single party listings. So an agent has um, a one party listing agreement or a signed buyer agency agreement as representing only one party in the transaction. So if the, it it's, could be a for sale by owner situation. I've got a signed buyer agency agreement with um, my buyer. I contact that for sale by owner, ask them if they'd be interested in you know me bringing that buyer through um, and the transaction closes. I'm only representing the buyers in that transaction. The property should be entered into the MLS for comp purposes. Um, all required information must be included. So you do need still at least one uh, primary photo, um, you know, but number of bedrooms, bathrooms, those kinds of things. And then once that, that listing is closed out, you would close it out with you being both sides of the transaction and then let us know the MLS number and we would change it to non-MLS member 
um, for the, the one side that you were not representing. Okay, so again, um, agents of one party listing agreement, uh, purpose comp purposes. Okay, apparently I just doubled that slide. Um, so the other last thing they want to talk about here is the difference between active with offer and pending. So within 48 hours of accepting an offer, it needs to uh, be reflected in the system as either active with offer, meaning that you're still showing that property, you're still accepting secondary offers on that property, or pending, meaning you're not showing that property anymore and you're not accepting offers on it anymore. Uh, the only exception to that rule is if there is a home sale contingency with a bump clause. Uh, the reason that one does not need to be disclosed is that's the only situation where a secondary offer can be made primary without the primary offer falling apart first. Um, I just want to touch base on um, YRX. If you're not familiar with it, it's the Wisconsin Real Estate Exchange. Uh, most of the state of Wisconsin you'll see is in that more of kind of a blue color. They're all YRX members. We share our data back and forth uh, with them. So the offer of cooperation and compensation does carry over with um, all the participating um, MLSs. Um, and we have what we call inclusive search. So we don't care where that listing was entered in from, as long as it matches your criteria, you're gonna get all the results you're looking for. Uh, Jared. Any questions on what we just talked about? Yeah, can you go back to that slide for YRX? Yes. Um, so all of the counties that you show in gray are not a part of so uh, yeah, so up here, um, oh, sorry, she put in the right one. So up here, do you see my cursor? Yep. Mm -hmm. So they they are not part of YRX, and actually Door County left YRX, but anywhere else in like this bluey gray kind of area, those are YRX partners. I was going to ask about Door County. So D Door County, per my understanding, is not a part of YRX. Correct. Yeah, this is an yeah. older map. Uh, okay. They used to be, and then. Even when they were part of YRX, they're very protective of their peninsula. Yeah. So even if you tried to set up showing to go show the properties in the area, they're like, we'll just do a referral. Um, so they they basically dropped out. Yeah, they're pretty. I did not have a good experience with them. <laughs> yeah, they're they're very they're very sensitive about their peninsula. Yes. <laughs> um can we go back to single party listings? As far yeah. as um you know, we sometimes we have opportunities with single party listings um, where, you know, the first buyer may not have panned out. And so now we still have this quote unquote single party opportunity that a agent can present to the office. Same rules apply, though, with excluded listings, right? We cannot be marketing those single party listing opportunities on our private Facebook pages. Correct. Yeah, the same rule, that clear cooperation rule is going to apply to that as well. Um, I mean, you're, you know, you're more than welcome at an office meeting to, you know, to talk about it and say, hey, I can get a one party, you know, on this type of property, you know, you just got to be careful um, with your fiduciary responsibility and that you're not doing any kind of like negotiating or anything until, you know, you have that signed one party agreement in place. Mm -hmm. um, okay, perfect. And when you say property should be entered in MLS for comp purposes, you really mean after closing. It doesn't have Correct. to be. Correct. Yeah. Because especially when it comes to like, um, like one parties and like the for sale by owners, um, you know, is it, since it's not necessarily open to everyone um, mm -hmm. and you'd be advertising it at that point. So yeah, once the, once the closing itself happens at that point um, is when you would enter it in. Did you cover excluded listings in that, um, regard as far as entering excluded listings after it's a good question yeah. after closing yep yep so once once the property closes you can enter those in for comp purposes as well okay okay perfect yeah we've seen you know that we kind of have to walk a line with the clear cooperation and just make sure that it's not being advertised anywhere until you know it's actually closed okay um, I'm just going to look back at our agenda to see if there was anything else that I might have follow up questions on to make sure that we are covering it. Yeah, an agent asked me at one point if they have an excluded listing, um, 
and they verbally talk about it to someone else, can they send that other agent photos? No. Good point. Yeah. Because no, then you're, you're technically marketing the property if you do. And you're just... You know, it would just be photos to that one agent with an interested buyer, but that still would be a no. Correct. Yeah, because you're still you're still giving them physical <clears throat> materials. Marketing. Interesting. Okay, this is all good. Now, from any of you on the call, um, please, if you're a new light newer licensee, um, these issues will come up as you continue to sell and list properties. It is really important, especially for the, um, where all the resources are for MLS. I mean, Steph and I are always available for a question and a call about it, but you're gonna get it straight information if you go to the resources pages on MLS and either look at the videos or look at the pages that are pertaining to the question you have. Um, I love Jared's um, PowerPoint that he did today and we will be saving that. But again, there's a lot of information out there for you as an agent to be responsible for. And uh, we're sort of backups to make sure you're doing it right. But um, we want you to look it up rather than having somebody look it up for you. So. <laughs> Take the, the more you learn yourself on these policies of MLS, um, they become ingrained in, in your business as you go on. And the really important thing is, you know, if you do have a question on something, always be proactive about it and give us a call. Um, you know, we'd rather have you guys call, ask the question, get the answer from us, than for us having to go and correct it later on and at that point sanction. So always be proactive on that. Uh, Danny, I see your, your hand raised. Is there, um, I've heard, um, I don't know if it's rumor, if it's, if it's true, there's MLS training available or was that like a pre-COVID thing? So um, you're going to meet Darnell here in a little while. Um, he actually is taking care of revamping all of our training stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot more of that's going to be available in the future. We used to have weekly classes here at my office. But yeah, and then with COVID, you know, everything kind of shut down for a while. Um, we've hired many new employees over <laughs> over the last couple of years. Um, so now our training room actually is office spaces. So okay, uh, we we will be bringing those back. Um, you know, we definitely can come out to your you know, your offices to do training. You know, Zoom training like this. Um, we definitely want to get you guys the information you know that that you need. Sure, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to talk, um, because I think the last thing on our list here was um, searching. So we're going to go ahead, um, I'm going to kind of walk you through the menu tree, um, talk about that, and then Darnell is going to uh, teach you guys how to do overlay shapes. So I've got my quick search uh, saved up here. If you don't um, have anything saved in your bar yet, if you go to menu and hover over an item, you see the little gray star up here. So if I were to click inside that gray star, going to change it to yellow. It's going to add it to my tab up here for me. <clears throat> that way, I, if I'm using something a lot, like quick search, I can have it up there and at a click and get taken right to it. So I'm going to go to our quick search. So going to explain um, our, our toolbar over here. Um, you'll notice that with my toolbar, I've got all these fields open already for me. I prefer to see it this way. It just allows me to kind of at a glance to see what information I can put in there. If you want to have these open, you go to menu and go down to preferences, general preferences, and in this very top box here, um, expand all fields for quick searches. So I click that on, go down and click save. Now when I go to my quick search, that's how all these fields are automatically open for me. So our, up top here is our template. So this allows me to actually customize templates. Um, we're not gonna get into that today, um, but let's say I want just the two family features. If I change it to two family, it's only gonna give me the options associated with two family homes. And the system's gonna remember what template you used last. So if you did a vacant land search and used the vacant land template, and you come back in and are, start looking for bedrooms and bathrooms, 
you won't find them because it's it, it, the vacant land template does not include bedrooms and bathrooms. So if you seems like there's something missing from the template, definitely make sure up here that you're using the right one. Okay. So under our statuses here, you can select as many of them as you want to. If you are a PC user, you're going to hold down your command key, <laughs> sorry, your control key, and select. If you are a Mac user, it's your command key. Okay, if I use the, if I want to add in some uh, sold and pending dates, I got my option here using that little drop down. And anytime you see these double arrows going back and forth, if I click, it's going to toggle between actually putting in a calendar date, or let's say like with sold information, all I care about is the last thirty days when I'm doing a CMA. The nice thing about using the last thirty days is if I go in and print out a new CMA, and, and up, it's gonna automatically update just looking at that last 30 day period for me. This one here is contingent with offer. So basically that's your act with offer properties. The thing to keep in mind is that it does get a little buggy sometimes. If I were to click a checkbox in here and then click the with, uh, with offer, it sometimes will glitch and you'll get the little, little blue spinning wheel of death. However, if you just click directly on the with offer, it automatically checks it for me. And then it, it seems like that is a nice little workaround. And right now it says contingent of with offer. Obviously the English teacher did not come up with this. <laughs> so a contingent of with offer is only giving us those properties that are currently active with offer. So if I want to do the reverse, I'm gonna click on the of and change it to contingent not of with offer. And at that point, it's going to remove those active with offer properties from my search results. Hmm. When it comes to our county and municipality, we can either go ahead and just start typing in free form what we want. So let's just say Ozaki. And if I put a, a county in here, you'll see when I go to municipality, it's going to limit um, to just the, the municipalities within that county. However, I don't necessarily have to put anything in for my county. I could leave that blank and just start typing in what I'm looking for, for the municipality. Just keep in mind that if you use um, like, like Jackson and don't put in um, a county with it, there are several Jacksons throughout the state of Wisconsin. So you're gonna get different pockets of areas. So scroll down. I mean, the rest of these are relatively self-explanatory, but the one that's really important is this one at the bottom here, add a field to the search. Reason that one is so important is it allows me to add in any additional criteria that I'm looking for. So I can go ahead and click inside of here and it gives me alphabetized by category and then the things within that category. Let's say I know what I'm looking for already. Let's say I want water features. I can just start typing in the word water and it's gonna narrow it down to just those fields that are associated with water. So I could go ahead and select and bring it over. Or if I wanted to bring over the entire category, I would just click on the green plus sign. It's gonna bring over the whole category here for me. If there are features in here that I don't use, like I don't need state, I can click that off and it's gonna disappear from the search template. <clears throat> Once I'm done with this and I have it customized and I really like the features I have in here, I can actually save this template to use later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. So save search. We actually have some criteria entered in that you know, we want us to be searching on, or we have the option to save the quick search template. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save quick search template. This is a new template or an existing, or, or replacing an existing one. I'm gonna give it a new name. So if I wanted this to be at the top of my list, all I have to do is put a pound sign or a hashtag for you, you younger kids in the room, and then, Miller William, yes. Click on save. So now, when I go to my, te my templates, you can see I've got my KW tests, and I can toggle between those different options. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a clean map. Um, I'm going to give up my chair for Darnell. Um, so he's he's learning right along with you guys. So he's been working on creating map overlays and stuff like that. So. He's Am I able to right ask on. a quick question? Yeah. Um, okay, so when you do the search, I was just doing this this morning. So 
for one of the searches I wanted was I wanted to include like zip code. So several different zip codes, but then a certain area when I was doing that with like the, um, the function at the bottom, the little square circle things, it would then only take, take the section that I had done like the map uh, outline with. Is there a way to include both types of search, like the zip code and the area search? Yes and no. Um, if you go to, there, if you go up to overlays, sure. overlay the upper right hand corner. Right here. Yep. So if you go down to zip codes, it's going to show you the different areas that those zip codes cover. Mm -hmm. So the only way to use an overlay and then also the zip codes would be literally just to go in and draw around that zip code. So otherwise, it's looking for two contract, two contrasting pieces of information. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to do downtown um, Walker's Point area and um, like Whitefish Bay, so like they, the example is I want to get the downtown Walker's Point area, but they don't want all of 53217, they only want the Whitefish Bay area. So is there a way to just cut off to include the zip codes and then cut off at a, like a certain street point? Yes, um, and that is something that um, we will cover um, once uh, Darnell gets uh, the drawings and shapes for you guys. Okay, sorry, thanks. No, that's quite all right. All right, my name is Darnell Wilkes. Um, I'm the new guy. I appreciate Jared going over this stuff. He kind of, um, he's kind of mentoring me and he laid a, a lot of the foundation for what I would talk about. Um, my presentation won't be as long as his, so I appreciate him knocking out the hard work. It's kind of like being in school. He did all of the, the words and everything. I just get to play with shapes and draw stuff. So it, it makes it uh, a lot easier on me, especially as a new guy. So um, I appreciate you having me. I appreciate him letting me uh, do this. I'm going to go up to quick search to, <clears throat> to clear the screen. All right, we're gonna talk about the map features here. Um, the map features, it's, it's pretty simple um, as we get going. Um, it will actually enhance your search. Uh, so uh, just moving around and navigating the map features, if you look up to the top left, I can move up with these arrows down, left, right. Um, if you're younger, I played Contra as I was a kid, and there was a cheat code. It was up, down, left, right, BA, select, start. So you kind of do that, go through it. Um, I can use this plus, all right, to zoom in, or the minus to zoom out. Um, as I work my way down, you see these white arrows here to the left side. Um, again, zooming in and out, so I can zoom in and out there. Um, if I'm in this middle uh, kind of X looking, that'll get me back to the default map, All right? So pretty neat tools there. Um, I do have my um, arrows that are on my key keypad too, where I can move up and down and left and right, All right? And the last way we can do it is just with um, moving, toggling in and out with uh, my mouse. Okay, So that's how you can use those to navigate this. As I move to the right, the bottom, there's a hand. We call it a pan hand. All right. Um, that's just grabbing. All right. I can grab and move my uh, map around in a circle um, if I would like. All right. I can move and find what I need to find. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move over to the green plus, right? Um, again, that is zooming in, and that zooms way in, right? Um, I'm by high schools. I can look down, and you see as I continue to zoom in, uh, these numbers pop up, right? That leads me to the next, um, the next um, thing that I want to talk about was this uh, eye, this blue eye. That's the parcel information, okay? So Jared taught me this um, because I was clicking like a madman and nothing was popping up. And I don't want you to make the same mistake. So um, as I go and I look at some of this information, if I have this I, my parcel information, if I would just left click on something and then take my finger off of it, all right, then I would get the parcel information, the tax key number, um, that's um, our um, wire data uh, system with our taxes. Um, so is monsoon down below, um, tax key number here, monsoon here. It also gives me the listing activity of this property. If it's in the MLS, um, we'll have the listing act activity. 
If you do not have any listing activity, that might be a, a property that um, was not in the MLS uh, due to a new build or um, a single, um, a single, um, a, a, a different a, a purchase. What am I trying to say, Jared? Um, a single, a single party. Single party purchase. Thank you. All right. Um, you can do a radius search here. You can see the street view. The bird's eye view is always pretty cool where you can see the neighborhood. Um, and I think this is pretty up to date. Um, and you asked me where we get this data from. Uh, Jared asked me and I said, uh, it's got to be Google. And yes, we do get it from Google. We get everything from Google, it seems like. Um, I'm going to click out of this. There we go. All right. Again, um, it also measures the uh, parcel piece of land. You can see 120 by 120. Um, it'll measure that for you. So that's how you use that. Okay. I'm going to go back to quick search. All right. Refresh my screen. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. All right, so this next thing is just a measuring tool. I don't know how much you're gonna use a measuring tool, um, but for an example, um, say for instance, uh, my child is walking from Washington High School and I live um, by North Division here, right? I can map the route that my kid will walk, right? So say for instance, he's taking this route, all right? You can see that every turn, all right? I can map where they're going, right? That's one point, what is that? That's about 0.18, what is that? One, 2.3 miles, right? So I can map that just for an example. Again, I don't know how much you'll use that, but I just wanted to show an example of how to use it in this, um, cool. in this uh, presentation. So um, I can double click and it'll disappear. So remember clicking on and clicking off, click, take your finger off, it'll help you out. Um, some of these shapes are really, really interesting, really cool, right? Again, this is to enhance your search, okay? Um, and when I say enhance, right, I can use this rectangle, okay? And I can left click and I'll drag, right? And because we're looking for, um, looking for uh, single family properties, it'll show me exactly how many single active single family properties that we have within, right, um, this rectangle, okay? If I would like to delete it or remove it, I could just simply move over and click the X, right? So why would I use that, right? Well, there's a specific area, let's say Wauwatosa. I will click the area, all right? And then I can fill in some of this criteria that you were, that Jared showed you guys earlier, all right? So I can start um, pinning results, right? Right now we have 181 results. As I put in more criteria, remember the results will change. So that they'll vary and they'll, they'll go down because you get so specific of what you're looking at, okay? And what you're looking for, all right? I am going to remove this. and I am going to move to the circle. The circle is very interesting, all right? I'm going to use the Milwaukee County Zoo. Uh, say for instance, um, I'll say my wife works at the Milwaukee County Zoo um, and we're moving in and she wants to be um, no more than five miles away from where she works. I can left click, I can drag out, I'll get approximately five miles, I'll click again. And all the active properties, right, within five miles of the zoo on a radius search will click up. Again, there's 508. You can see that over here to the left. And as I start filling in the different criteria, maybe I want four bedrooms, maybe I want five, right? Um, again, is enhancing your search. And those numbers will go down. So, sorry to interrupt. So as soon as you start using the shape, it automatically pops up as an icon on the left side for you to get rid of? That's not something you have yes. to ask? Okay. Yes, right here, it'll get rid of it. And as I hover over it, it'll actually highlight it for you. you sure. see. Okay. Okay. The fun one, right? And I'll say fun, it is fun. I'm gonna remove this one, all right? Is this polygon, okay? 
This one, you can do whatever in the heck you want, whatever area you want. I'm going to zoom in, all right? And I can left click and drag, left click, drag, left click, drag, any kind of weird shape, all right? All right, you can use that. And Jared has a joke that he likes to tell, if you don't mind. So hopefully everyone in here has seen at least one movie, one version of the movie Ghostbusters. What was the things that you never did with the proton packs? Cross the streams. Cross the streams. If you're drawing your shape out and you go over your own lines even just a little bit, you do will end up uh, getting yelled at by the system and having to restart your shape. So just be mindful of that. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is the same it's used the same way as to enhance your search right so but it it'll draw a different shape somewhere um i'm going to there's a, a specific place that i wanted to take you with this one um, i'm going to go to a specific spot all right this spot i like right it's a it's a triangle so i'll use my polygon shape 145 here. All right. So you can draw your triangle, right? Like, like and you can get all of your um, specific uh, searches just within that little triangle. So I like it because uh, it was different when I did my searches. So again, you can play with these um, and it makes your search a little bit easier. Okay. I'm going to move over to this question hand. how do you yes. how do you make the polygon like enter i'm doing it right now and it kind of just keeps point like giving the points to different okay polygons. so let me draw the polygon again all right so i'm just in this no different i left click and then take my finger off and drag to a specific point let's say it hills corners i am going to left click again and drag Left click, drag, left click, drag. After I left click, okay, I'm going to double click. Oh, okay. And it should pop off. <clears throat> yeah, when it, comes to okay? the, when it comes to the polygon, since you're putting uh, individual points down, it, you have to do that double click. Otherwise, it doesn't, it just keeps going. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, poly has its own mind. We like poly. Okay. We got about five minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to hurry up. All right. This pin, okay, it locates an address. So if you have a specific address, uh, you can locate that address. I'm going to um, do a specific search. Um, vacant land, right? Say, for instance, um, my mom wants to live somewhere in Wisconsin. I'm from Texas, so she wants to move here. I don't know why she would because it's cold. I'm going to use my... I'm going to use our work address, all right, and press locate. It will locate it, it'll pin it. And then I'm going to use another shape, which is our circle, our radius search. Say, for instance, I want her to move up here and I'm going to build um, her a house and I want her to be within five miles of me, um, not further. Maybe I should say for, further, right? <laughs> I can move out, all right, and in, or I can simply ah, go to here and click radius search. Okay. Now I can actually put five miles in here. 5.0. All right. Create the radius. All right. And we'll see these are all of the vacant land where I can build a house for my mom if she moves up here. Again, from Texas, don't think she wants to do that, but just in case. Um, and I don't want her that close to me anyway. So uh, five miles is good enough, all right? So I can create that um, by doing a radius search. So the pin is a, a nice um, um, way to get a specific location um, if you have an address. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, let me just um, take the wheel real quick. Yep. I just want to answer her question. Um, that she asked before, All right? Okay, so with the question before having to do with um, like the Whitefish Bay area and removing certain areas, can you repeat that question for me? 
Yeah, I was just doing it um, as we were talking. So I want, I did the overlay with the zip codes and then I want to just include Whitefish Bay. Um, so like Hampton up to Bender Road, those are, that's the area that they're looking. Yeah, you just do two separate searches. Okay, so you've got, so is that, are we trying to exclude a certain area then or? Yes. So all of Whitefish Bay except for that area? No, Hampton up to Bender. So all of that area plus certain zip codes within downtown, um, they don't want the zip, they don't want the five three uh, two one seven. I believe that's the zip code for like Whitefish Bay, Bayside area, Fox Point. They don't want that area. They just want Whitefish Bay. Okay, so let's take. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay, <laughs> I can. Yeah. So Thank it's you. the five three two one seven, but they only want like this area down here. Yep. Okay. So what <clears throat> I would do is I would just draw out this area because I can add as many pieces to this as I want to. So I'm not going to take my time, but I can do mm -hmm. my you know area around it, and I can go ahead and add in another area as well. Did they? Did they what other area did they want? Yeah, five three two one one five three two zero two. Okay, so basically working our way down yeah. the lake shore. Okay. But yeah, what, if what we can do is Oh, okay. You have to draw the area. Yep. Oh. And when you're drawing, um, like Darnell said, you can move your, your screen around with your arrows oh. and your keyboard because sometimes you will run out of space. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you go into the lake or not because that's it's not gonna like I mean there's obviously nothing in the lake. I wouldn't say that. I was, uh, right after I started here, someone had, um, there was a uh, mapping error and it made an entire underground um, <laughs> municipality inside of Lake Geneva. So, <laughs> so there's like 30 properties in the bottom of Lake Geneva. Sounds yeah. funny. So yeah, so th um, that's how I would do it is, you know, just okay. kind of draw all those areas. That's really helpful. Cause I was trying to do it and then it would just only catch either the polygon area or the zip code area. So that's helpful to be able to draw that out. Yeah, because what it's because what it's doing is it's looking at, okay, we want just what's, what's in this polygon. And then we're confusing if I say, we want just what's in the zip code. Mm -hmm. So if you just use all polygon to draw it out, it's gonna give you your best results. Cool, thanks so much. You're welcome. Hey, we are at 12.59. Last minute questions. Thank can you so much. Um, real quick, can you do single family and condos in the same search or do you just have to do two separate ones? You can do it uh, in the same search. So again, if you're um, using a PC, just command. you're going to hold down your um, control key. So now I've got single family and condominium selected. Um, but just keep in mind, it's not going to give you all of the options to search out. Okay. So, you know, there's certain things that are part of uh, condominium that are in the single family uh, template, and there's certain things in the condo template that are in single family. Gotcha. So you'll lose a little bit of your, your searchability, but for the most part, um, the major thing should be there. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. It is one o'clock. Um, again, we're here to help you guys. Uh, we've got one phone number that you can reach any department here. That's 414-778-5400. Um, also, if you go to our um, website, metromls.com, under contact us in the upper right-hand corner, it's got all the different contact information as to who you should call um, or email. But yeah, if you just call, get 414-778-5400, uh, say, hey, I need to talk to someone um, about policy procedure question, they'll transfer you to our data data. Thank you right. so much. It's You're great. very welcome. So go and play, play with some shapes and have some fun. You want to play with Polly. Thanks, Ash. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you. Uh, thank you, Darnell. Thank you, Darnell. Thank you. Wisconsin's uh, awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you next week, Monday. Thanks, guys. Bye.